Hello students. Today we will see the concept of job tracker and task tracker in the Hadoop architecture. Now these are the two important components of Hadoop ecosystem where we have a large volume of data which is to be handled by the Hadoop architecture. For this handling of large volume of data and processing of data, we have a better throughput, we have better efficiency and these two are the important components which are required to manage these on Hadoop architecture. Now it is primarily developed in Java as we know already we have seen and uh, the most of process that are executing within Hadoop typically follow the same base architecture of Java and execute within their JVM. So the JVM are the important processes which are executing as a part of this Hadoop architecture. Now the processing of jobs within the Hadoop architecture are managed by job trackers and the task trackers. So let us see the details of these two components, how they are executing, how they are handling all the tasks and the jobs. The job tracker is a data service within the Hadoop environment that controls the job execution and processing. So job is a top level the processing, top level execution that is happening. And for a given Hadoop cluster, there is only one job tracker process that executes all the job requests submitted by client applications. Now, as you see, there is one JVM that is running as a job tracker process. Now, the detailed sequence of how the jobs are executed in the Hadoop is as we know. So, let us see how it is happening exactly. Now, first of all, the client submits a job request as a part of the execution. So, it may be like sorting of numbers. It may be a part of MapReduce job. It may be like uh, some finding the counts of the some uh, words or counts of some IP addresses or any log file processing. Then the job request is processed by the job tracker which is a top level component. So how exactly it is doing? The job tracker talks to the name node to determine the locations of the data within the cluster. So as we have seen the name node is a top level component unit which is actually handling the different or the multiple data nodes. So the job tracker is talking or communicating with the name node once the data locations are identified, the job tracker finds task tracker nodes that are available to it and issues the work to these nodes. So what are the job is to be executed? The task for that particular jobs are distributed and given and submitted to the task tracker. The task tracker notifies the job tracker the status of the processes upon completion. So what are the task is to be completed? If it is done, that is notified to the job tracker. So this is a diagram what we see over here. Hadoop name node is at a top level component. We have the job tracker and the name node which are communicating as a component as a part of this name node. We have this HD, it is under the HDFS layer. Then we have the task tracker and data node under this name nodes. And these are communicating. So what are the job is to be given that is been divided into multiple tasks which is a part of this map reduce layer. And it is been given to this task tracker to do and task tracker notifies the job tracker upon its completion. So this is overall job execution in the Hadoop. Now considering all these points, when the job and its process are completed, the job tracker updates its status and the signals the client application for completion of processing. So as the tasks are done, it is giving uh, the feedback to the job tracker. It is giving the feedback to the client application because it is the origin of the problem. It is the origin of the actual job, what we are executing. Then client applications can pull the job tracker for status information during the execution of the job. So as we know status and the health is always considered when we are executing the job and the task. A task tracker is a node in the cluster that accepts the task from the job tracker as we have seen just now. And by design, every task tracker is configured with a set of slots which indicates the total number of tasks that can be accepted at any given point in time. So every task tracker is a process where it has some capacity, it has some limit, which is called as a slots and which indicates the total number of tasks which can be given to a task tracker. So what we see, there are few features for the task tracker when it works. The task tracker creates and manages the separate JVM processes to execute the actual work assigned by the job tracker. So JVM has important consideration as we already see. So there is one every separate process for the every task which is executing as a part of, uh, as a component of this task tracker. Then by creating a new JVM process, the success or the failure of the particular piece of work remains isolated 
and does not affect the entire task tracker. So that is what the important aspect of this task tracker separate JVM process. The task tracker monitors all the processes that were created by it for job execution and it captures all the output and the exit code. So always we know that task tracker is giving the feedback returning to the job tracker. So it is monitoring all the processes and it is capturing all the output and the exit code from every of the task tracker. Then when the process finishes execution, the job tracker is notified of the status. So this is important criteria. What is the status? So what is the status of the particular task? What happened with the task, whether it is done or not. Okay. The task tracker communicates periodic signals called heartbeats to the job tracker to notify that it is still alive. So as we have seen already that data node and name nodes are also communicating with this um, uh, kind of heartbeat signals. Same way, we have this job tracker, task tracker are communicating with this heartbeat signals every three seconds. Okay, and it is checking that whether it is alive or not because it is a process, it is a part of a large or the massive component, massive processing. So every time the health is important to check with respect to entire ecosystem. Then these messages additionally inform the job tracker of the number of available slots. So job tracker can be updated about the availability of nodes within the cluster where work can be delegated. So every time the uh, job tracker is getting the signals from the task tracker. It is knowing that how many slots are available, how many tasks can be assigned to a particular task tracker and the entire health is maintained with these heartbeat signals. Then the, when the task tracker is executing and notifies the job tracker, there are three possibilities that job tracker can choose. It's quite possible that considering this massive processing, massive data and the volume and everything, there is a possibility of failure. And when there is a possibility of failure, what could be the action taken by the job tracker? So there are three possibilities. It can resubmit the job elsewhere in the cluster. As we see cluster groups of these data nodes and name nodes as a one bunch, as a one cluster. So it can submit to other cluster. It can mark that specific record as something to avoid and not process that portion of the data. So data may be the problem is data may be having some, uh, we can say garbage. So we can avoid that particular record of the data. Then it can blacklist the task tracker as unreliable and move on. So this is another last possibility that the task tracker is not functioning well, so we should not rely on the task tracker. We should not give the task to this task tracker, so we should blacklist the task tracker. So these are three possibilities which could happen with respect to a uh, task tracker when the job, uh, when a particular task is given by the job tracker. Now, the combination of these two processes and their management of job execution is how Hadoop executes map to these processes. So these two are the important processes, very important with respect to the job execution and every component of the job that is a task execution. The job tracker is a single, it's a single point of failure for the processing map produced services on Hadoop. So that is a problem we can say. And if it goes down, all the executive and code jobs are halted. So we see that the job tracker and task tracker are important components with respect to Hadoop execution, job execution, tax execution, and execution of the map reduce process. But a single point of failure, this problem cannot be avoided with respect to this map reduce services on Hadoop architecture. So there should be some methodology, there should be some way to handle these failures of the job tracker. We should keep a backup of the task tracker as well as job tracker when you work with this job tracker, task tracker. So here, HDFS is a file system that also provides a load balancing, disk management, block allocation, advanced file management within its design. So here, the Hadoop manages all data management functions implemented to a series of API calls. So as we see, JVM is there, APIs are there, library is also using this uh, all management functions. And it was file based architecture, HDFS achieves unlimited scalability and can deliver sustained performance when infrastructure is expanded within the cluster. So this file-based architecture along with the HDFS file component, load balancing, risk management, and all uh, components are handled using this job track and the task tracker. Thank you.